Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for October 12th, 2021. Well, doggone it that yesterday, I'm sure there was a lot of folks left um, in a painful situation um, trying to buy the market up yesterday in the early session as we were pushing up and it looked like there was just no reason not to be buying. And then, doggone it, those bears attacked right where we would expect them to attack, pushing us back down and, well, leaving some bearish patterns on the charts. So what does that mean for this morning? Well, how about we settle in let's buckle up let's take a look at these technicals see if we can figure out how we might want to approach the market for today in the tuesday edition of the morning market prep video good morning once again everyone thank you so much for being here let's take a look at these charts now i know yesterday was probably just a little bit on the disappointing side but i gotta tell you we did have some warnings of this and i did talk about it yesterday um remember guys that when we are in a down market like this we're going to have to be very very respectful of price resistance levels and as you can see as we approach that 50-day moving average level in the diamonds that's where that resistance came in and as you if you look across lots of different charts lots of different areas you're going to find the same thing and that is those bears being a lot more determined than they were on these back little push downs that we've had here in the market where the bulls just overwhelmed and rushed bum rushed them right back to the top they're finding that to be a little bit more difficult now and as sentiment in the world and i mean the world is starting to show pressure here you're going to see those bears potentially be a bit more on the fighting side when we reach resistance levels so be cognizant of that as we rally let's take a look at this on our diamonds chart we pushed right up into this resistance level in the chart. Whoops. There we go. We pushed right up into this resistance level in the chart. And that's where those bears came in and decided to really start to push things to the downside. And obviously, um, we had talked about that possibility that if we broke this support, right through here, that we could fill this gap yesterday. And essentially, um, we came close to that and during the overnight session we pushed down um, there and filled that gap on the diamonds and they're trying to push it up here this morning they're trying to even though Asian markets were lower European markets are lower this morning we're trying to put on a bullish face in the pre-market pump once again I want to be really I would I think it'd be wise to be extremely careful because we have seen this story before. Try to pump up the pre-market and then find, as soon as we can get a few people to buy, institutions have someone to sell to and we drive back down and we could retest that overnight low in the futures. Now yesterday I drew this upside trend and noticed that we've broken that trend uh, that downtrend broke that trend to the upside. But if we were to draw this across here, notice that that trend um, really coincides with the resistance levels in the chart that we're struggling with in that 50 day moving average here on the diamond. So what I'm going to suggest is don't be too surprised, guys, if we test the overnight lows here in the chart push back down toward that support level and hopefully if we push down toward that support level here in the dow that will hold if it doesn't hold then we do have that potential that pretty ugly pushback that could fill um, all of that move back to the downside and then of course if we can find that inspiration from the bully side we could see that what could occur here in the market is just a consolidation we don't necessarily have to move up we could just rest here in the market we could rest below this resistance we could rest above this little support area in the chart and we could just consolidate and if I were to draw that trend line out here, you could see that consolidation in here could last a period of time 
just resting and kind of spilling off some of this volatility. So keep in mind that is a possibility. But if we can find some inspiration here on that bullish side, we've got a lot of work to recover some of this technical damage in the diamonds chart. If we take a look at the SPY now, SPY, um, similar situation where we have kind of an ugly move yesterday breaking that little bit of price support that we had in those two candles and we did end up filling that gap by the end of the day and this morning we're trying in the pre-market pump to push back up here and say oh that didn't mean anything it didn't mean anything we're brave we can do this but there is that concern, I, I think, this morning, that possibility that we could retest overnight lows today. Don't be too surprised if we see another whipsaw. If I draw a downtrend across this, notice that we had popped through that resistance in the chart, but we ended up failing that yesterday by the end of the day. And so we're gonna have to respect these price resistance levels in the chart. And also keep in mind that if we look across this chart, we have some pretty substantial price resistance in this chart right through this range in here. And as we battle that downtrend in the chart, all of these areas are going to, going to come into play and that's where we would expect to see those entrenched uh, bears. So watch carefully for that. Now, if we begin to slip, if we do slip down, remember we have already filled that gap in here. So if we take out the overnight lows, we do have that potential that we could sink down in here and retest these lows here in the SPY. So watch that carefully and closely today. We also want to take note that we are still well below our 50 day moving average. So we didn't even quite make it up there yesterday in that 50. We came up, tested that 34 EMA, tried to pop through it, but that's where those bears came in. So we have this lower high failure here in the SPY chart like it or not there it is and if we take a look at the Q's QQQ has even a worse situation here and probably the worst of the market right now notice that in uh, the QQQ chart we failed right at price resistance in the chart and if I throw in those resistance levels in here you can see we're failing right in those areas that we would expect to see those bears come into play and we tried yesterday, we tested that downtrend, as you can see, almost to the tick, tested that downtrend before those bears came in and we filled the gap and then some yesterday where we dropped down through there, we filled that gap and then some. Now we'll have to watch that closely. If we retest the lows this morning, that possibility does exist that we could come back here and test this area in the chart. Also, we, we run the same you know, potential in here where we could just chop around in here over toward the trend, just spilling off some of that volatility, unless we can find that bullish energy that pushes us up. But we'll want to watch these big resistance levels if that is the case. Now, the, the NASDAQ is going to have an additional problem here. NASDAQ is very sensitive to bond prices. And if we take a look at TNX, the 20 year treasuries, they are ticking just a tiny little bit higher this morning and notice they have been on a run to the upside. So that's problematic for the NASDAQ and TYX, the 30 year bonds, um, had just a teeny little tick down this morning. We'll want to keep a close eye on this because as bond pressures um, continue to move up, that can put some downward pressure on the NASDAQ. So watch that close. And let's take a look at IWM. Now IWM, although oil was surging yesterday, um, we started up, we started to really push to the upside. We had those financials moving, um, getting going, but doggone it, by the end of the day, they pushed back down. And as a matter of fact, we ended up closing the day back down below the 200 day moving average. Notice that that's drawing that 50 day closer and closer to that 200 day moving average where we could actually create that death cross, 50 crossing down through the 200. But it's also possible if we can find that bullishness in here, we just glaze right, glance right off of it, bounce um, to that upside. We're still going to have to deal with that downtrend. We're still going to have to deal with all of this price resistance that has been building up here for a year 
in the Russell. So watch that closely. I'm still kind of bearish here on um, IWM, but let's watch that closely and carefully. And one of the problems here with IWM yesterday with energy prices surging, it happened to be in the financials. Um, if we take a look at um, the XLF, the Spider Select Sector Financial, um, we tried to move up yesterday and then we ended up the day with a bearish engulfing candle here on those financials. We're kind of rejecting that high in here, but we haven't given up. There's there's no reason to suggest that this has completely failed yet because we're holding on to that little upside trend. But it, kind of an interesting circumstance as we head toward those big bank earnings um, starting tomorrow with JP Morgan, and then really ramp, ramping up on Thursday with quite a few big bank earnings coming out. So watch that area closely here in the chart. That could be telling for for the Russell. Um, let's take a look at our uh, VIX this morning. And our VIX uh, did bounce right in this area. And I talked about this yesterday, that potential support area in the chart of that uptrend. We did bounce right there, push back up, but it didn't get bad. We, we topped right in there on that 20 handle. That's that area where I see all that support and resistance across the chart. But we didn't get a major spike in fear yesterday that pushing us back above this downtrend. So um, we'll want to keep a close eye on this as we range around in this little wedging pattern. We'll have to watch that. And we could certainly see us just kind of range around in here um, with volatility until we can figure out what direction we want to go and possibly just waiting on earnings. Um, to um, find that inspiration either up or down. If we take a look at our T2122, that four week new high, new low ratio, notice that we pulled back pretty substantially yesterday in that T2122 um, from that bearish reversal zone. As I keep saying, these areas, um, bearish reversal, these zones are very, very important and we need to recognize those. And particularly when we are in a downtrending market, we need to recognize those resistance levels in the charts. Now we slipped back down below the halfway point, which really didn't change much of anything. What it just really says um, in T2122, if we can find bullish inspiration Day, we've opened a pretty good size upside door that we could move to the upside if that inspiration comes in. But we have about equal pressure um, to maybe push this down if those bears find that inspiration and really charge in. So watch that closely. We're kind of half and half here on that. Remember, T2122 doesn't give us direction. It just tells us where those pressure points are. And then let's take a look at our T21. T2107 is those percentage of stocks below their 200 day, or excuse me, above their 200 day moving average. And we slipped yesterday from 44% up above their, above the 20, uh, 200 day to only 42%. So you can see we pulled back just a little bit yesterday. So unfortunately, we were kind of hoping that we would break through um, this downtrend in the chart and start moving in the other direction. But yesterday we reacted negatively to that area, acted negatively to that resistance level in the chart. What we hope to see is those bulls come back in and get us back above that area. Um, we do not want to see this continue to um, sell off and even take a new low in place. That could make it really difficult for the market to rise if that were to occur. So watch that one pretty close. Let's take a look at um, our economic calendar for today. And our economic calendar just has a pretty light day going on, but certainly something we want to pay attention to. Notice right here at 10 a.m. Eastern, we have the job open openings report. Now, job openings report hasn't really been in the past all that big of a market mover, but that could change just simply because the, the consensus for the job openings report, at least the Econo Day census, uh, consensus, is suggesting job openings report could take up above 11 million jobs open. Um, and that does not bode well for the market. 
um, and just shows an unwillingness of people to go back to work and get going. So watch that closely. If that were to tick up, we do have that potential of that being a market mover. And then also keep in mind, we have a uh, slew of bond announcements and things like that going on here, as well as another Fed speaker here today at 1115. So watch that. The, the big the big worries are going to start to happen tomorrow, and that is where we'll get um, a reading on um, CPI. Notice we'll have those mortgage applications that fell sharply last week. We'll want to keep an eye on that as well. But CPI, that consumer price index, that could be telling for tomorrow and definitely could be a market mover tomorrow morning. We're going to have the earnings tomorrow morning from uh, JP Morgan. They'll be in here early in the morning affecting the market and then we have that FOMC minutes um, which everyone will be looking to to see if there's some clues of taper so watch that carefully and then on Thursday is where the um, uh, fourth quarter earnings really start to ramp up we have a bunch of big bank earnings on Thursday so keep a close eye on that we've got uh, we got those things here in the market that could really start moving things around pretty heavily so make sure you're prepared for that make sure you have a plan to deal with that potential volatility let's take a look at our earnings calendar for today and our earnings calendar today has a few things on it that we do want to make note of but um, there's a lot of unconfirmed reports in that um, that note. So one of the things I want to point out here, guys, if you look just below the title of the video, I always have a link back to the daily blog. And as we ramp up in earnings, I won't be able to cover all of the earnings of the notables. So please make sure you um, find that link because as we start to ramp up on these earnings, you'll wanna go over there and you'll wanna click that link and go back and take a look at those notables. Let's take a look here this morning, however. We're gonna see a um, report from Fastenal this morning. Looks like Fastenal's trying to bump up here this morning, a little hammer pattern in the pre-market. And by the way, guys, I've had a question on this. These pink candles that you're seeing here, this is pre-market um, data here. That candle will not show up um, at the open, it will just show right where the stock opens, you know, right in there. So watch, um, please understand that that is not um, yesterday's price action. Yesterday's price action was here. This is this morning's price action in the pre-market. So keep an eye on that. Now, Fastenal has been running in this downtrend here. So we'll want to watch that closely. A good earnings report could potentially help that pop on through there. If it were to fail here, however, that could be a problem for Fastenal. Let's take a look. We also have um, SGH um, reporting today. Keep an eye on SGH. Again, we've got a bit of a downtrend going on in this chart, but we have a very substantial level of price support. So this has that potential. Those earnings reports in, in SGH could really move this one today. Being a semiconductor, that's something to be uh, certainly paying attention to with all of our semiconductor shortages out there. How about AZZ? AZZ will also be reporting today. They've been in a nice little upside move here, trying to break some resistance in this chart and wanting to break out, but just hasn't been quite able to find the energy to do that. So keep a close eye on that one. And last one would be PNPF. Whoops. PNPF, um, whoops, that is not it. PNFP, sorry, I can't read and read and type this morning. Pinnacle Financial um, reporting today, so keep a close eye as this tries to push through some resistance highs up here in that chart. So watch that closely. So with that, everyone, how about we take a look at some stocks that could be setting up? But before we do that, guys, if you could do me a quick favor. If this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you can please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post one of these videos. And from then on, you know what to do. Click those thumbs up buttons if you feel the video was worthy and leave those brief comments. It's those comments and then the engagement with your video that makes the difference on the growth. So watch that 
um, carefully and please do that for me it, it helps a lot and also thanks to everyone who shares these videos out on on your social media that helps a lot as well and also is supporting the channel through the buy me a coffee link you guys are awesome now I don't drink coffee the, that money is all going um, to improvements to the channel and I just want to say thanks to everyone getting closer and closer and closer to um, um, rolling some of that out and doing some testing so thank you everyone um, you guys are awesome let's take a look at some of the these charts that are setting up and let's keep in mind guys that these are not necessarily recommendations to buy or sell any security as a matter of fact you should be very very careful um, with the volatility that we've seen in the market and make sure you understand the risk of these trades and um, are focused carefully carefully on um, these positions so that you understand the risk of these trades. Let's take a quick look. I'm gonna, I'm running out of time. I'm gonna move through some of these very, very quickly. And I mentioned some of these yesterday. That YY I mentioned yesterday and YY continues to look pretty good here. Whoops, that's a two day. There we go, there's my chart. Um, starting to look pretty decent here, pushing up in, um, um, coming up off of that bottom looking pretty bullish here notice we're holding above that 50-day moving average this is a pattern we call the rounded bottom breakout where we break above that 50 and hold and then we have that potential that we will work our way up to the 200-day moving average and just notice guys that's about 40 percent upside potential move if that can get going so watch that carefully on yy um, also i would keep a close eye on um, AMD. Now AMD did suffer a little bit of selling like the rest of tech did yesterday. And what I ended up doing yesterday is placing a price alert on AMD. What I like about this chart is we're breaking that downtrend. And once again, we're trying to hold this as support. So if we can find that bullishness here in the market, if those techs can get going, then we have that opportunity to buy um, a chart that's holding above 100 area. This 100 is a natural support area for a chart. Uh, charts love those big round numbers. So watch that. We're holding up here and we could see that opportunity that that could poke on through. Now we do have the complication of all of these earnings on the way. You'll want to pay close attention to that um, as we push toward those. Now guys, I mentioned my KMI yesterday. KMI is a position I hold. That continues to look good. It shot up yesterday. We're seeing a little bit of upside pressure on it this morning. Once again, guys, I would really highly recommend you don't chase something that moves like that. Wait for that next consolidation. Wait for that next pullback or entry point into a chart, just like we did here. Wait for that next entry point into that trade. And I do want to point this out. If you look at a longer term chart on KMI, this has a very long term downtrend that this has been dealing with. So watch that carefully, guys. It may have to rest under that downtrend here for a bit to build that energy to be able to move through to the upside. So watch that. Um, closely don't rush into trades just because someone else is in the trades do that evaluation carefully in those charts and watch that closely um, other places that you might want to start keeping an eye on we had some pullback in that energy um, in some energy stocks and you can see we had a little bit of resting pullback and we're showing some bullishness here this morning in the XL um, e so keep an eye on stocks like maybe Exxon Mobil. We're trying to hold in here around some support areas that pull back into here. We might engage this trend in here and show some more upside here in Exxon Mobil to come up here and test those areas. So be really careful about chasing them, but stocks like um, Devon that's been resting here for just a little bit, got a little bit of a pullback yesterday. So we've been kind of locked into a range here. Watch charts like this that could still have that bullish energy in them and set up higher, but don't be surprised if they have to rest a little while before they get going. So put some of those on your list and keep watching those charts. And last but not least, I'm gonna mention KHC again. Now, KHC 
Started up yesterday, struggled a little bit with the selling, but we're continuing to hold in this pattern where we break the downtrend, we're holding up in here. We're still being challenged by that 50 day moving average, trying to get up through there. That one might be worth keeping an eye on. And I'm also gonna put uh, GIS on that list. Take a look at General Mills. General Mills, this is a consumer defensive stock that pays a strong dividend yield. So watch that closely, guys. Pushing up here, getting that resting move back here toward that trend. Watch for that next opportunity here in GIS. So with that, everyone, I want to wish you all the very, very best. Thank you so much for watching this morning. I truly appreciate it. Be safe. Have an awesome day. And we'll see you right back here bright and early Wednesday morning. Take care, everyone.